2011 formula research. It's a financial newsletter that develops systematic investment strategies for the stock, bond, and commodity markets. Nelson started out uh, on the improbable field of strategic arms control, working at a PhD at Columbia University. In time, he switched to the study of finance, undertaking extensive research into mechanical timing models. 20 years ago, Nelson began sharing his findings with a small nucleus of traders and investors. Today, it's a newsletter, a formula research, which has also been a client of, that serves individual and institutional clients in 30 countries, including some of the leading names in global trading and finance. Now, um, Nelson's presentation is uh, around systematic market analysis, um, expanding opportunities and managing risk. Nelson will be sharing six of his most effective systematic investment models for stocks and bonds. Its strategy is appealingly simple and strictly objective, thus mitigating the risk of guesswork and emotion. The six formulas have track records going back decades and continue to perform well in real-time application. You will see how each one features trading methods um, that have surpassed its market benchmark by every meaningful measure of risk and return. Um, Nelson will close by combining the five individual strategies in the composite that offers higher returns and lower risk than any single component, thereby forming a whole that is greater than the sum of the parts. Without further ado, Nelson. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> A couple of uh, logistical questions. How, how do I operate this uh, thing? Let's see. Yeah, this one. Okay. Enter. Yep. All right. And how do you, how do you back it up? Because I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Up and down. Using a. Uh, can everybody hear me? Because I'm not wired for sound here. Or, or should I be? Okay, uh, with your permission and Alex's permission, I'm going to speak into this microphone. I'm, if I stoop over, sorry, uh, it's just part of the uh, protocol here. Uh, by the way, as I step away from the microphone, I just told you I was going to adhere to this uh, uh, this microphone. But can anybody can can you hear me from here? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's 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 be a little improvisational. Let's be a little uh, spontaneous and forget the electronics for a moment. Thank you for uh, turning out for this event. Uh, with one of the other. Not one or the other. The other uh, speaker on this occasion is my dear friend Linda Rashke. Uh, and <coughs> she and I have spoken all over the world on numerous occasions. So um, if you, I guess one of my, my point is that it is this is a huge celebratory um, opportunity or an occasion for me. I'm from Tennessee in the U.S., and so uh, coming to London is a little bit of a big deal. And, but, but also, uh, just the um, reacquaintance with, with the colleagues and professional uh, uh, people, such as Linda and her husband Damon, and various other people that I that I just met, uh, you know, in the last half an hour. Now, what we're going to do, with your permission, is go through uh, six different timing models, most of which were uh, formulated not just years ago, but decades ago. And, uh, and they have performed well ever since then. Now, why, why would anybody mess with a, a systematic timing model? Because it's a lot easier than uh, you know, doing charting. Uh, and so these are formulas. And uh, I, I've, got, I've got plenty of friends um, uh, that live in places like New York City and Greenwich, Connecticut, and, and even London. That they use all sorts of sophisticated uh, techniques to to uh, 
uh, outperform the, the whatever the stock market or the, the bond market, whatever, whatever you're trying to beat. Uh, these models were introduced uh, by people years ago, and we and uh, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna go right through uh, and uh, and share some of these with you. All right, Primus. Now, what on earth does this mean? It's, it's a guy named Martin Primus. He's actually a uh, former resident of London, but somehow he, he moved to uh, I don't know Tampa, Florida, someplace down south. Uh, and his name is Martin Pring, and he's the one who, uh, who developed this system and published it in something called Stocks and Commodities Magazine in 1989. So, I mean, some of you were not even born in 1989. But uh, uh, it's one of the, the simplest, but one of the most effective timing models uh, I've ever seen. And uh, and uh, it, it works for both stocks and bonds, and it works in the United Kingdom, it works in Switzerland, it works in Italy. Most of, most of our stuff is gonna be uh, kind of uh, uh, rooted in, in uh, US uh, uh, kinds of, uh, the S&P 500, j just for uh, convenience. But don't worry, uh, I'm not gonna, uh, if, if all this stuff works in, in virtually any, uh, uh, all right, now let's let's see what we got. Okay, you you buy the S and P 500, or it could be the FTSE or any any other index you want, as long as it's above its 52-week uh, uh, moving average. And uh, what's commercial paper? Uh, any short-term interest rate. Uh, it could be the Bank of England 90-day. Uh, any short-term interest rate, doesn't matter. In the U.S., it could be federal funds, it could be 90-day uh, T-bills, it could be uh, uh, the discount rate, it could be the prime, anything, it doesn't matter. In this case, it's commercial paper. You, you get out and, and go into the money market fund when either of those conditions turns negative. Now, let's, let's see if, uh, if I can do this. All right, uh, what is CAR? That's the compound annual return. It's the same thing as the, uh, the annual percentage rate. And uh, this, this method, which uh, Preen, a former resident of this uh, the town, uh, it, uh, when you use this, this method that Preen uh, developed years ago, decades ago, you get 12.1% uh, compounded annually. Now listen. None of the models that I will be uh, sharing with you today make uh, like 19% a year. Most of them, if we're lucky, are gonna be 10, 11, 12%. Uh, so so uh, please don't, don't ask me to produce these, these extraordinary returns. I, uh, virtually nobody can develop or, or uh, 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 produce those kinds of returns. But how do I know? I'm a great here. I've been around the block. <laughs> now listen, uh, at 12.1%, $10,000 it grows to about 1.4 million. Drawdown, what is drawdown? That's the worst peak to valley equity dip in the totality of the equity curve. In other words, this goes back to 1970, so that would be uh, 40, uh, 43 years or something like that. The worst um, uh, 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 bad spell uh, was uh, in this case uh, 16 percent. Now the, the, these numbers will figure in in future uh, in our in a, uh, future uh, elements of our discussion. All right. Uh, okay. To recover from a 16 percent loss, if if you're investing at 12.1 percent a year, that'll take uh, if you you need 19.6 uh, percent to to regain. Uh, if, if, uh, back where you started, that'll take you about 19 months. And uh, about, uh, three out of, uh, about three out of four uh, trades were uh, profitable. We don't care, uh, as technical analysts, we don't, it, it could be one out of four, as long as we make money and beat the market, at least so I can. All right, listen, thank you so much for, uh, 
uh, your, your uh, attention and your presence. Does anybody have any questions thus far? You mentioned about the moving average. Is it simple moving average or all right, very, very good question. Nelson, uh, yes. I, I think it was a 52-week moving average yes. one. I got it right. Uh, it wouldn't matter whether it was a 40-week, a 60-week, uh, or any other um, interval. And furthermore, it wouldn't matter whether it was a, a, a I mean, I, I hope, I do not have the presumption to stand before you and tell you that my whole model depends on whether you use an exponential or a, a, a simple arithmetic moving average. If I did that, uh, you ought to fire me as a speaker. How would you trade size, like uh, units, for example? What okay, question, um, uh, Nelson. Uh, let's say you're a money manager. What, what is your position size for a thing like this? Th this model is so um, transparent, so straightforward, you could virtually do uh, um, it, it, anything. I mean, uh, use ETFs, anything. Um, I am not a money manager, but uh, if I were, I would uh, if, buy, buy some proxy. Yes, an ATR uh, measure or something. I'm sorry? An ATR measure. An ATR is when you apply the terms. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I understand it. Anyway, my, my, my point is, Use any proxy for the for whatever stock market you care to uh, invest in. All right, listen, I've, I've already uh, usurped a whole uh, bunch of your time. Let's get let's go on to the next one. Okay, uh, I just said that the 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 uh, Primus model made 12.1 percent a year and it turned ten thousand dollars into 1.4 million dollars. Here's what the S and P and I admit this is a kind of a, a mirror centric. In other words, this is uh, kind of kind of uh, uh, oriented to the United States. But uh, in, instead of uh, 1.4 million, the same ten thousand dollars went went to a little under seven hundred thousand dollars, and there was a 55 percent drawdown. Uh, so what we're trying to do is is uh, technical analysis is use. Um, formulas, recipes, to outperform the market. And what we really want to do is outperform the market in terms of both an absolute and a relative uh, capacity. And uh, well, this, this, uh, Martin's why, uh, sorry, Martin uh, Frank, I'm trying to say, um, he, he developed this formula years ago. And uh, this, uh, this meets the case. Now look. All right, perfect. This is this is 1970. This is 2013. Um, this is 43 years or whatever it is. This is the stock market, and in, in, in this case, it's the S&P 500 total return, uh, which means uh, it, it takes into account re, uh, reinvested dividend. Now, I, I admit no, there's virtually nobody in this room that actually trades the S&P. But that, that's kind of the benchmark over in the U.S. And uh, here's this model that Preen um, uh, shared with us 25 years ago. Let's see. Let, let's look at this right now. I, I don't have my uh, my contacts in, so if, you know, if I look like Elmer Foote or something like that, well, I am Elmer Foote. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, here we okay. This is about when uh, Preen published this thing. And look, look, look what it's done since then. It's basically captured all of the gains in the stock market um, it, it, while avoiding this stuff. This is the, here's the stock market right here. This is what we don't want as technical analysis. We don't want this, we don't want this, we don't want this. Everybody with me on this? We want this. So, in short, in short term paper, um, doesn't qualify. You wouldn't cash at that point. Is that 
Okay, the question is, when you get a sell signal, which is when, when the S&P 500, or it could be the FTSE or any other index you care about, when that drops below its 52-week moving, moving average, and by, it doesn't matter whether that's an exponential moving average a, uh, or any other type, and it could be uh, 42 weeks, it could be 62 weeks or anything, uh, uh, it, uh, I wouldn't have the presumption to stand before you if this model depended on, on one parameter. Okay. Um, what happens when you get a sell signal? Uh, you go to cash, and in this case, I used uh, what's called commercial paper in the United States, but if you, uh, anything that is a short-term uh, interest rate. Uh, I thought that was part of the qualification. I didn't really like it. You didn't go short on the SMP. Oh, uh, question. Uh, are, you, are you shorting the market? No. Very good question. Nelson, when you get a sell signal, are you, uh, are you exiting from uh, a long position and then going short, or are you just going to be on the sidelines? This is on the sidelines. Now listen. Don't, uh, listen to me one second. Uh, you, you can just look at me and know that I, uh, temperamentally, I love the short side of the market. I, I love selling short. But it, for purposes of, uh, of these, these historical studies, no short selling. When you, when you get a sell signal, you are out. So thank, thank you. Look, I gotta get going here, because uh, my dear friend Linda Rash is, uh, is gonna uh, beat. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay, triple 40. Uh, all right, uh, here are the rules. Buy when the S&P 500. It could be the FTSE or anything else. It's great when it's 40-week moving average. I think I just mentioned this. It doesn't matter whether it's a 60-week moving average or 70-week or anything else, and it doesn't matter whether it's arithmetic, uh, exponential, or any other uh, form. Uh, 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 Computational uh, uh, PAA bonds. What's that? Uh, uh, in the United States, there are various degrees of, uh, of uh, credit um, that become a solvency. In other words, uh, 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 the credit rating. Rating. There you go. Thank you. At, at, at various degrees of credit rating. BAA is, is not high on the list. That's why we want to use that. It's an indicator for the stock market. Okay. We want something with poor credit rating to be a barometer for the stock market. So, uh, so when uh, BA bonds, uh, the yield, but right now, I mean, I don't even know, it, it, it could be 8% or something like that. When that's less than it was um, 40 weeks ago, and uh, here we go with the commercial paper again. Um, it, it, in other words, basically, when interest rates are low and getting lower, that's what you, that's when you need to invest in the stock market. But don't repose confidence just on those two fundamental uh, inputs. What you want, you need to make sure the stock market is actually going up. Because sometimes these fundamentals um, can confuse you. So I have a question. Um, when you say bonds and commercial paper less than 40 week moving average, are you looking at yield or price? Okay, a, a, a very good question. Nelson, uh, you know, you're sitting here talking before this distinguished group, and uh, I'm talking about bonds and uh, commercial paper and all this stuff, and uh, I forgot to mention one critical component. I'm talking about yield on all this stuff. Uh, the, the lady. Um, uh, said, uh, and also you're talking price or yield. I'm talking yield. Uh, I, I should have, I, I should have specified that. But when the when the yield on this BAA uh, bond thing is lower than it was 40 weeks ago, that's good for the stock market. But that's not sufficient. You need some kind of evidence that the stock market is either staying where it is or going up. Because if, 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 for instance, in a deflationary collapse, uh, like in the 1930s, uh, the, the yield on, on these things could, you know, they, they, they could be seemingly um, positive because there's a 
well, a, a deflationary collapse. So you don't want to invest in the stock market in 1932. Sorry, I, I have a question. On your BAA bonds that you're looking at, um, what tenor are you looking at, or doesn't it matter? I'm, I'm sorry, not only am I uh, lying without those lenses, I, now I can't hear it, now say it again. On your BAA bonds that um, you're looking at, and you're looking at the yield, um, what tenor are you looking at when you look at it? Does it matter? Are you looking at one year, three year, five year, ten year yield? Oh, uh, no, let's see. Um, when, when, <coughs> when, when they quote the uh, BAA bonds, it's Moody's uh, BAA bonds, there is no, uh, uh, there, there are no alternate uh, uh, maturities. It, it, it's one thing, it's the, it, it's the exact same thing as, as you've heard of the Dow, or the, in this case, the S&P 500. It's exactly like that. It's, it's a, a quote you get from the, uh, you know, the financial press. So, uh, and, and, by, and by the way, once again, if, if, if this whole model was dependent on whether I used a two-year, a six-year, an eight-year, or any other uh, maturity, I wouldn't have the uh, presumption to address you. Are we okay on that? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's, let's get going. Because I'm, I'm, uh, then it's going to kill me if I don't. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see, treble 40. Okay, uh, treble 40 made 12% of you. Now, listen. You're going to say, well, big deal, Nelson. Uh, you know, you came all the way over from Tennessee to tell us about 12% of you. Try uh, finding some kind of mechanical systematic <laughs> model that made 12% a year since 1970. It is not all that easy. And anyway, uh, uh, $10,000 back in 1970, uh, it grows to uh, uh, 1.3 million. Draw down. I, I'm not happy with this 19%. I'd like to keep drawdown, which is the, the worst um, uh, transparent or uh, transient loss. I'd like to keep that around 12%. Uh, but uh, well, I mean, this is I mean, this is the way it is. I published this years ago, even decades ago. Uh, let's see. To recover from a 19% drawdown, you need a 23% uh, gain. At 12% uh, a year, it'll take 22 months. Now let's go over and look at, the, at what the uh, S&P did. Okay, uh, instead of 1.3 million, the S&P made uh, about a third of that, and it had a um, maximum drawdown of 55%. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody with me? All right, thank you. <coughs> the, the most, no, what's the word? Uh, uh, the, the, the greatest insight into performance is an equity curve, in my opinion. It's based on decades of, of practice in this field. And you can see there have been a few hiccups here and there. Uh, but, uh, but anything is better than this. This is, this, we, uh, as, as technical analysts, we are trying to avoid this. I, I love these graphs because they, 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 they say more than, uh, than any single individual can communicate to a discerning audience like you guys. All right, Pushin, uh, and who's this guy? Uh, he, uh, there's a thing in the U.S. called the, uh, well, you probably heard of the Federal Reserve, and he, he and I think he, uh, I think he lives in uh, Kentucky or someplace like that. He, he's some scholar, and he, he came up with this model. And uh, <coughs> look, uh, I'll make this fast. Uh, the earnings yield is the opposite of the P-E ratio. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in, in, uh, let, let, let me uh, kind of accelerate. When, uh, when this thing is better than it was 50 weeks ago, that's good. When the S and here, here's another demonstration of of, uh, uh, of an important principle that I adhere to. No matter how 
compelling some of these fundamentals are. And I, I've got uh, friends and, and uh, colleagues and that kind of stuff who are experts in, uh, in uh, quantitative finance and all that kind of stuff, and they were experts in, in, uh, in uh, all this uh, uh, monetary and, and, and uh, economic stuff. No, they, they, all of those models uh, mess up at some point, in my opinion. So, but here's where t uh, technical analysis comes. Don't forget this important thing. Don't invest in the stock market unless the, uh, the stock market is either staying still or going up. <laughs> so, uh, so I, and, uh, and, and it, uh, a bunch of these conditions uh, uh, turn negative and then you get it. I, I admit we're, we're going through this kind of fast, but uh, I gotta get going. All right, uh, this thing made 10% uh, a year, and you're gonna say, well, a big deal, Nelson, 10%, uh, well, that beats the, believe me, that beats the, the uh, buy and hold return from your stock market. And uh, let's see what the drawdown is. Okay, 15% after 43 years, not that bad. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'd rather that be 5%, but it's not that bad. And uh, so uh, to recover from a 15% uh, maximum equity dip over 43 years, you need, uh, you need to make about 18%, and at 10% a year, that'll take you 20 months. Contrast that with the buy and hold. As you know, we are trying to beat this. Uh, okay, I mean, the, the, at least in the US, probably in the, in the United Kingdom, um, the stock market is on one of the, uh, one of the most uh, um, assertive surges in financial history. For instance, just since uh, Barack Obama became president, which was about five years ago. I don't know, never mind what you think about him. The stock market in the U.S. is double. Think about that, that's 18% compounded annually. Uh, so, so we're going to a, a kind of a bubble uh, kind of thing over there. But uh, here's, uh, this is what the stock market has done in the last 43 years. It gained about 10, uh, a little over 10% a year, but there were a couple of this is, just, this is just one drawdown. There were a couple that were uh, uh, similar in scope. I, th I think I, I mentioned that, that last model, it would take 20 months to recover. This would take 100 months. Listen, you guys have demonstrated <coughs> total forbearance. Thank you so much. Uh, we're halfway through, but I, I can accelerate the thing. Any other questions? Okay, uh, what's the cutoff date when, when does this data finish? I'm sorry? When does it finish? What's the last month that it ends? It, it starts 1st it starts of January 1970. When oh, does uh, it end? Uh, about a week ago. Mm -hmm. The question is, well, when did you um, finish the, right. uh, these findings that, I, <coughs> excuse me, that I'm sharing? That was about a week ago. So it was like, uh, I don't know, September 5th or something like that. Anybody else?
And uh, but it, it, talking about trim follow. See, uh, some of us. I've got dozens of friends who use uh, sophisticated quantitative finance to uh, analyze the stock market. In the end, I think what we should all do is uh, strictly, well, it, it doesn't have to be exclusively, but it doesn't hurt to uh, stress uh, trend following. Now, this is a trend following fixed income model. And, uh, and uh, if, 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 he, if Mr. Heine told me about this probably 30 years ago. And uh, look, uh, I'll, I'll make this fast. Uh, okay, the uh, Dow Jones Corporate Bond Index has to be uh, better than the, it was, or has to be uh, greater than its 24 week moving average. Doesn't matter what kind of exponential or any other kind of moving average you use. And furthermore, it doesn't matter whether it's 24 weeks, sorry, it doesn't matter whether you use 14 weeks, 24 weeks, 34 weeks, or any other number. Uh, T bond yield. Somebody, somebody asked whether I was talking price or yield. I'm talking yield here. Uh, it's good when that's less than a six week moving area. It's good when the uh, T bill, uh, 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 short term uh, interest rate, T bill, less than. Uh, it's good when when those interest rates are, are lower than they were, uh, or sorry, below their six week moving area. Uh, Dow Jones. Uh, Utility average, it's good when that's above its 10 week moving average. It's good when CRB, what's that? That's the Commodity Research Bureau. It's an it's a, the index of uh, commodity prices. Uh, okay, well, when, it, when any three of these things are, are positive, uh, you go along. Now, I published this thing. But, but, by the way, this works for both uh, stocks and <coughs> I published it. Uh, now, now I can't even remember, but it was over 20 years ago, and it still performed well. Let's, let's see how it's done. Now, don't don't ask for like 19% a year over the last, uh, you know, uh, uh, a decade. All right, 11.5%. 11, 11 okay, nothing wrong with that. This is this is the bond market that we're talking about. And look at, okay, $10,000 grows to 1.1 million, and look at the drawdown. Uh, under 5% after 43 years, including <coughs> over 20 some odd years after uh, the, the dearly departed uh, Mr. Heine um, uh, shared this method with me. Uh, so uh, you have a 5% drawdown, it takes about 5%. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it'll take you about, it, it, um, at 11.5% a year, it'll take you about five months to uh, reach break even after 43 years. This is a great one. And by the way, I can't remember whether I got a graph here or not, but uh, uh, this works <coughs> as well for stocks as it does for bonds. And furthermore, it would work well. In fact, I, I think I'll point this out. I gotta get going. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you for your uh, patience and everything. But uh, <coughs> this, this would work for virtually any financial market, including the, you know, the United Kingdom, where I could go over to uh, Paris or something like that, or Switzerland. All right, let's let's get going. Wow, talk about a smooth equity curve. That's what we're looking for. It's technical analysis. I don't have to tell you that, I'm, I'm, but I am illustrating. All right, competitive returns. Okay, okay, this is good. Or at least tonight, to my mind. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up so that you guys are not um, uh, uh, captive here listening to me uh, uh, pontificate. But a dear friend of mine, a guy named John Hussman, uh, got his PhD uh, from Stanford, which is kind of a big time thing in, in the U.S. And then he, he with, with a nucleus of $15 million, that's one $5 million, which is nothing in the field of money management. He started a mutual fund that suddenly mushroomed to $6 billion. And I've been on the board of that, uh, of that I've been privileged to be uh, affiliated with them. 
uh, for the, uh, the last, you know, uh, 13 years or something like that. Now, this is based on research he did when he was still in graduate school. I'm not making this up. He lived in, you've probably heard of Stanford. It's Palo Alto, California. Uh, uh, Linda Rashke, who lives around there somewhere. I think her mom uh, lives somewhere there. there. Anyway, uh, is that right? Where, where is Linda? <coughs> but, uh, okay. Anyway, uh, uh, Husband is the one who, who came up with this thing. And uh, look, it's, I'll make this fast. It's good when the yield on uh, treasury bonds uh, uh, less than uh, 24 weeks ago. <clears throat> it's good when uh, T-bill yields uh, less than they were 24 weeks ago. It's good when the S&P dividend yields uh, is, is less than it was uh, 20, uh, 24 weeks ago. Uh, CPI is a uh, consumer price index. It's a barometer of inflation in the U.S. And uh, when, when any two of these things uh, are good, you buy. And I guess, uh, now, now I can't remember, but, uh, when, when the tally drops to maybe one or zero, then you get out. Now, I, I published this thing in 1994, so that's uh, 19 years ago. And uh, at, at that <coughs> then, uh, I, I barely knew my dear friend John Husband. He himself was just emerging from graduate school. And uh, but we've become uh, buddies you know, ever since. Let's see how this thing is done. Okay, it's, it's made about 13% a year, uh, which is good. So the $10,000 probably goes to, I mean, I, 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 I would go 2.5 million, let's see. All right, over 2 million, I was a little off. Uh, drawdown was a little higher than I like. I think it was about 35%, let's see. Yeah, 36%. Uh, that, means, that means you need to, uh, to, to get back to break even, you need a 56% gain. That it's not my my favorite thing, but I wanted to share it with you because this this is real world. You know, I published this stuff years ago, and uh, and some of it is flawed a little bit. Uh, but you you don't really know um, in advance. Everybody with me thus far? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for well, your presence, I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, I guess my point is that John Husband was maybe 23 years old. And he developed a logic that culminated in this model. And uh, he's a smart guy. All right, let's go on. All right, we've seen that we've seen this before. It's the S and P, but virtually every model I'll uh, talk about is is outperformed the S and P. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, uh, explain to you guys or, or share with you that some of these models are not perfect, such as this one, competitive returns, uh, thirty six percent drawdown. I'm not, I'm not real happy with that, but I mean, that, was, that was what I published in 1994. Let's, uh, let's see how we're doing. Boy, that's, that's what we don't want. And we, we don't want this either. But it's better than this. Mm -hmm. Or this. All right, let's let's look at 73. Let's see him. Okay, right, here we go. This is the. Some of you weren't even alive when this happened. Uh, but this is the 72, 73 bear market right here. We don't want this. That's why we're technical analysts, right? Because we're not going to put up with this buying hold stuff. All right, prime discount. We, 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 we're getting to the, uh, we're, we're getting there. Now let, let's see. Okay, the, 
the prime rate. What uh, what is the prime rate? It's um, it, it, it's like a a, a conventional uh, bank loan kind of thing for your best customers. And what is the discount rate? Well, in the U.S., the discount rate is is uh, governed by the uh, Federal Reserve. In other words, it, it's different between a commercial a commercially uh, determined rate versus uh, one that is kind of market driven. And so if you do the spread, if you subtract one from the other, you get an idea of how uh, challenging the economic environment is. Uh, the, the, the bigger the spread, the more <coughs> uh, disturbed the, the, the economic environment is. And so anyway, uh, what you want is uh, you, you want this spread to be going, it either stay the same or going down. In this case, uh, uh, you, you wanted less than 50 week moving average. I could have done this a, a zillion different ways. I just happened to choose 50 weeks, or it could have, okay, uh, and I could have, I, instead of a, below a, a, a certain moving average, I could have said it's, uh, it should be lower than it was 50 weeks ago or 40 weeks ago. And furthermore, in this case, I used a moving average. Uh, I could have used a 30 weeks, 40 weeks, 50 weeks, anything. If, if, if um, I think I mentioned this, I wouldn't have the nerve to present to you these these models if the whole thing, um, uh, the entire premise, depended on uh, some kind of arbitrary number. Okay, and, and the whole model will not fall apart if you. The, the mistake four for five on your people. We, we with it? Everybody with me on that? All right. Uh, oh, right, this is critical. This is critical. Some of my my dear friends who are managing billions and billions of dollars, they don't understand how important this is. Find some kind of trend following. Uh, indicator to confirm what the fundamental uh, elements uh, suggest. Don't forget that. All right, uh, that sounds, uh, 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 what's the word? I didn't mean to uh, sound presumptuous, but, uh, but that, it, it's critical. So it's, it's important. This is important. And that's true for all, all these people. None of the fundamentals work 100% of the time, uh, but, but neither do the technicals. Well, you, you kind of need both, so I claim. All right, we've seen this before. All right, that, which, well, here's, here's the 72, 73 bear market, this thing, <coughs> sidestepped it. it. Did okay all the way up. Damn you! Look, looks pretty good anyway, doesn't it? This is what you want. This is exactly what we want. What, what we are seeking is technical end. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 positive. All right. I I took. There, there were six models here, Pushin, uh, Primus, um, competitive returns, and a, and a couple of others. So I, I just uh, put all, all of those equity streams into a, a, a single composite uh, thing. And I think it made about, you understand, we're, we're getting near the end. You've been so patient. All right, do you understand that I took the equity curves from all six models and, and combined them into a composite? Okay. I think this thing made about 11.3%. Let's, let's see. All right, perfect. Now, here's where you get a, uh, um, a, 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 a whole greater than some of the parts. And well, I think Alex uh, used that same expression earlier. Look, 11.3% a year. None of these models, in fact, nobody, based on my acquaintance with various money managers, and I've got a lot of uh, friends in the field, 
nobody produced 20% a year going back toward, uh, 40 some odd years. It, it, it's virtually impossible. <coughs> but this one made 11.3% a year. Look at this. Now, earlier we were talking about drawdowns of like 15% of even uh, in the case of uh, competitive returns, it was uh, 35%. Here we have now seen <coughs> maximum drawdown to under 12%. Uh, so, uh, so uh, it, it, to, it, to um, gain, uh, to get back to break even after you have an 11.7% uh, um, shortfall, uh, you need a 13% a, uh, uh, gain, and that'll take you uh, 13 months. Whereas it'll take 100 months if you invested in the stock market. Now, in this case, uh, you know, or uh, as uh, has been the case frequently, I've talked about the S and P 500, but it wouldn't be the same. Um, if, if we were talking about, uh, you know, the the the, 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 the FTSE or the CAC 40 or whatever. Uh, there we. Is a guy who. As a guy who cares about systematic formulas, this is what I love. Look at this. Let's, let's see if we can find that 11.7% drawdown. I don't, I don't even see it. Anybody? Was it this? Measure this? Or this? Like my point is that. Um, when you, when you blend these disparate methods into a, a structured composite, you gain uh, all sorts of risk mitigation. You, it, 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 so don't, don't use one system. But at the same time, you don't need a PhD. You really don't need a degree in quantitative finance to do this stuff. All these models are uh, straightforward. I, I, I've known dozens of uh, friends who, who, uh, who have uh, doctorates and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and in my opinion, and, and I've got the great uh, complexion to uh, reinforce uh, my conviction. You don't really need all this stuff. So I like, All right, now listen. You guys have been <coughs> totally uh, patient. I've, uh, I've only got a couple more things. I did this the other night uh, back in Tennessee, and I've never done this before. With your permission, I, I took the same six models that we just talked about and apply them to the FTSE. Now, understand, uh, the, the way I did it, it was the cash financial times stock exchange, not total return. Uh, in the US, I, I don't know what it is here, but in the US, half of the, uh, of the compensation, or sorry, the return of the S&P 500 is, is reinvested dividend. I don't know what, what, it, what it is to the FTSE. So you're not going to see any, you know, 18% or anything like that. But uh, just, just since I uh, stayed up all night <laughs> doing this, uh, indulge me one, another uh, 30 or 40 seconds. Oh, well, I, I forgot, to, forgot to mention this. If you, if you, if you took this six models that I mentioned, and you, you uh, employed leverage and you've allowed for reasonable uh, margin cost, in other words, interest cost. In my case, I <laughs> used uh, uh, the, the, uh, the prime rate in the United States, but you, you can use almost anything. Anyway, the same $10,000 turns out, well, it, it made about uh, something like 18% a year. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It, 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 right, the exact same models as a composite allowing for interest costs, made about 18% a year, which means $10,000 through uh, 20, uh, nearly $22 million. 
And yes, I mean, I'm not, I'm not happy with this, uh, this drawdown, this 25% or 23%, whatever it is. I, it's, not my, uh, it's not my favorite. But um, anyway, it, we're talking about some serious money here. Now, Alex is, is about to beat me up his head, and I've got, I've got just a couple, couple more things to share with you. Yeah, any questions about this? We're okay? All right. Look, I'm going to shut up in just a second. Thank you for your uh, forbearance. Now, look. All right, that, that's, that's what happens to uh, with two to one leverage, even allowing for interest. All right, uh, there were six models here. Uh, Primus was the one I mentioned. Uh, it made uh, about 7% a year with 20% uh, uh, drawdown. The FTSE itself, this goes back to uh, 1991, because it's as far back as I could do it. Uh, uh, okay, uh, but by nominal return, I mean no, no dividends reinvested. All right, triple 40, that was another one that made 7.1%. Same exact models. Now think, we're using US uh, interest rate uh, and other fundamental indicators, but we're applying it to, well, if you will, uh, a, an alien market, namely your own market. But we're, uh, but yeah, I did this at you know, 3 a.m. the other night. Uh, but uh, imagine. That this, in my opinion, points up the robustness, that is to say, the strength of these models. All right, but, but look, uh, all right, there's, let's see, 4.7. All right, for, uh, Pushin, and uh, 4.7. How many, here, here's a fixed income model. In other words, a bond model, which I applied not to the U.S. bond market, not to the U.S. stock market, but to the United Kingdom stock market. And it still did okay. All right, uh, competitive returns, that's, that's my uh, buddy, John Husband. Okay, that made them 5.7% uh, since 1991. $10,000 grew to about 34000 Let's see what the points he did. All right, $10,000 grew to uh, about twenty. Twenty-eight thousand prime discount. Uh, yeah, kind of the same thing. Now, uh, for, for the, uh, Alex and various other people, this is it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. This is my coda. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me uh, appear before you. And uh, number two, um, uh, well, uh, were there any questions? Yeah, the FTSE one has leverage in as well, two to one or not. Now, uh, question is, uh, Nelson, did you did you put in leverage with the with the, the in the last up? And uh, no, I didn't. It's straight uh, straight cash. Yeah, straight cash. Thank you. And and what did I do uh, when you're out of the market? I can't remember. I think you used some U.S. interest rate. I, I can't remember. Anybody else? Folks, thank you. Thank you, Nelson, for his presentation. If I go to the UK, I'd like to show him with a small token of our appreciation on behalf of the MTA.